this Stitch Club video is we're going to talk about free motion. Um, here we go. This is the method you use when you want to sketch um, and be really, really freestyle in your embroidery. It's fantastic for using up scraps. You can then move on to do things like free motion quilting as well, but certainly for decorative pictorial work, um, then this is absolutely brilliant. You do need to set your machine up and I've gone through some of that but just to cover that again um, you need to drop your feed dogs there is normally a button at the back of the machine um, on the bottom bit behind where your uh, presser foot normally is and if you feel along there take your free arm off and feel along there and you'll usually find a button which you slide across it'll be quite stiff okay if you haven't got that so say you've got an older machine or a mechanical machine often what you'll find in your kit of stuff there'll be a little plastic um, covering and that sits in two little lugs either side of your presser foot okay and the next thing that you'll need and i'm rooting around desperately in my little pot here because i can't find it probably because it's on the machine um is one of these uh, free motion foot okay and you either will have one within all your gubbins say you've got a quilting set with your machine you'll probably have one of these if you don't then um, you can order them online I'd recommend really getting one that um, goes with whatever your make of machine is and it's got a kind of spring action here okay and because the feed dogs have been lowered there will be a gap between the bottom of this presser foot and the actual feed dogs on the machine. Okay, but I'll explain more about that as we're sort of under the machine and the process is going. One thing I will say though, just to remind you, when you're putting your machine back to normal settings, um, what normally happens is people sort of start sewing and go, oh, it's not moving, it's not moving. Even when you slide, slide your feed dog button back um, but it will not the feed dogs will not raise automatically um, they won't rise until you drop the presser foot and take the first stitch and you'll hear a clunk and then you know that you're back in action so you haven't broken your machine that is just what you have to do to get the machine back in action setting wise when you're doing things like tension and stitch length there is no stitch length so you're going to take your stitch length down to zero tension wise is really really going to depend on your sewing machine and i suggest you practice and try and find um, a sort of even ground if you've got an automatic tension on your sewing machine if you're computerized um, i tend to just leave mine as it is um, sometimes with the mechanical ones you will need to drop that tension slightly um, but as i say that is definitely going to be about your machine if you have any issues let me know um, and we'll try to do that sort of over the whatsapp or something like that okay because as i say each machine does tend to be a little bit different okay um i'm going to use my big machine for this partly because i've got a lot more space to set the camera up so i can get in close but obviously it doesn't matter just a regular machine will do the same job okay um my one the big one is quieter i will i will say that though okay so uh, let's get on with it okay so now i'm going to set the machine up for free motion um i'm doing this on my bigger machine just because i've got more space to fit the camera in here so hopefully you can see what i'm doing the foot that i'm going to use is the open toe darning foot okay if you've got a quilting kit with your machine it will probably be in there and this is one of those sorry my hand is in the way where it has to hang over the hole where the screw is on the side here it hangs over sorry the camera's going to keep going in and out of focus because my hand is in the way so a bit like with the walking foot you have to take the whole of the shank off to get this foot attached and make sure it's done up nice and tightly 
or change the thread on the top um, you'll see that it's quite clear in here I've got the open toe one on um, so I can kind of see what I'm doing you can technically do this as they used to in the in the olden days without a foot at all the best thing about the foot though to be honest is that it is a measure of safety in that you can see where the needle is because when the needle is going up and down at speed it's quite difficult to see exactly where it is so the foot will actually show you where that needle is the other thing that i've done is i've dropped the feed dogs on your machine it will either be a button at the back of your machine here that you push to the side and you'll see them just drop down so you can't feel them or you may have a little plastic plate that sits across the top of them if i drop this presser foot on this foot you'll see it's still gliding above the presser foot on the free motion foot does not hold the fabric down in place in quite the same way as on your regular presser feet and that's as it should be because what you want to be able to do is to actually move the fabric easily underneath okay so we've dropped the feed dogs and we've also taken you can it depends on your machine take your stitch length down to zero okay because you've dropped the um, feed dogs I'm going to have to do this by hand because the camera's in the way of the threading magic threading button there we go okay um because you're moving the fabric around there is no stitch length okay you are deciding what the stitch length is and that is the big difference with this method of sewing um if you've not done it before then it may well make you a bit ooh, when that's my noise for that um make you a bit kind of prickly under the armpits when you first do it one thing to bear in mind is keep the speed low it's actually easier to do faster but when you first start keep the speed low because what it will do is just kind of give you a minute to think about it if you like but this is the kind of effect that you get and this is what I meant, the difference between this and the other one I'm searching for that I did. Um, sorry, that's in glass, so I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But this, I can just show you the leaf. This one has been done just by using the straight stitch, the regular straight stitch, but I took it right down as small as I could to one um, so that I could move around a little bit easier this one is very much more free um you can go forwards backwards sideways so you can go any which way with this but because it's such a different technique it does really take practice and you know please do not expect to be able to get the hang of this first time out some people have a real knack for it and i think a lot of it is to do with whether you um are good at drawing a friend of mine who's fabulous at this stuff uh, she doesn't actually machine sew really she she just does free motion and when she came to it she thought of it differently if you like she thinks of the needle as the pencil and instead of the pencil moving over the paper you're moving the paper underneath okay so as i say very different technique from what you're used to and when you first start you'll find um i haven't actually done any free motion for ages and i always find that when i start again it takes me a little while to get in the swing of it so this isn't the best work i've ever done i have to say but anyway um because you just want to get the flow if you if you like what you're going to do is the ideal is to have the needle going like the clappers but your hands moving nice and smoothly around okay and that gives you the best effect for the sketching if you like the the sort of the smoother you can get that the better so why don't we just I'm having a little mess around here 
I'm going to look at the um, one of the leaves and you'll see I've gone round here a couple of times so number one key sorry this does keep focusing and unfocusing every time I get my hand in the way but I, wa I want to get up close so you can really see what, what I'm doing <coughs> make sure you drop the presser foot when I drop the presser foot there's very little difference the presser foot is more or less in the same position what drops is this bit here if you like a um, bit more obvious on this machine but on your machine it might not be obvious but oh my goodness you'll know if you start sewing without the presser foot down you will end up with a huge bird's nest underneath okay so if it starts clunking and making hideous noises um, stop and you might need to get in with your seam ripper to let it loose I would suggest that you don't start on your project you really do give this some practice and I also find it easier put something underneath it don't just go on to bare fabric um, I've got like a felt under here um, or a interfacing something like that just so that you've got less of a gap the less gap you've got actually between the presser foot and the fabric you still want to be able to move it but there'll be less jumping because when I start sewing you'll kind of see what I mean I'm gonna so I've dropped the presser foot and I'm now oh, yeah, trying to do it from the top and then hopefully it won't work this just feels really cack handed okay here we go so I'm going to start with the needle down and I'm going to get that habit sorry <laughs> going to get that thread at the back out of the way okay always start with the needle down I'm going to take my speed down so I can go nice and slowly but you'll kind of see how jumpy it is so it's kind of jumping but I am very slowly moving the fabric to follow the shape of that leaf okay and I'm going back to the beginning and then I'm going to go around again because I want it to look sketchy and this is what I mean about it actually you'll find that when you're going quite slowly like this it does get a little bit wibbly wobbly okay if I go a lot faster oh hang on I have to take my speed up there we go so if I go as fast as I can and this is probably shaking the camera you can see that it's it's got a much better finish on it there imagine if you can if you were drawing a circle if you draw it really slowly it will be really crinkly if you draw it quickly it's much smoother and that is the look and the feel that you're going for okay so as I say the keys to it are definitely start off slow until you feel your confidence build and even when the machine is going fast, remember to move slowly with your hands because if you jump around, you'll get those very, very big stitches. Um, and that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for small stitches. This is a good place to start. If you want to move on to free motion embroidery um, on a quilt, for example, free motion quilting so um this is a good place to practice because you do need to practice because you need to get that speed right so that you get the length of the stitch right because for quilting that is really really important but we'll go on and look at that later i think it's one of those things that you you take baby steps and you get used to it so perhaps starting with the um, much smaller straight stitch for example and just getting used to following shapes and, and lift and turn and that kind of thing, that can really build up your skill level so that when you get to doing something like this, it takes it to the next level. So I'm just going to do, um, I'll do a couple more. I'll do that flower actually. 
because uh, if it gets too tedious, we can always speed it up, can't we? I mean the film, not the machine. I won't speed it up much more because it's going quite fast anyway. So remember, always start with your needle down. The reason for that is it stops that first jump and that first jump of the needle is normally makes you jump actually and at that point you normally take your foot off the it's a bit like in the car when you first start driving you take your foot off the gas if you like and and panic a little bit so have your needle down so you know exactly where you're going to start and as i say we can start reasonably slowly there we go and follow that shape round this is a slightly bigger shape so any minute now I'm probably going to push the camera over. I'm going to speed up a little bit. You might say I'm going around a couple of times because I want it to look like I've just gone in with a black felt tip to get this really sketchy effect and stop. When you feel, oh I don't know where I'm going now, stop. If you start with your needle down, it finishes with your needle down and that means you know exactly where you're going to start and now I can just readjust myself while I've got time to think and then start on the next petal. thing I will point out your machine unless you've got a long arm um, your machine will probably sound a lot more rattly than this and that is just because this because this is quite a heavy machine it's very solid so do make sure you're working on quite a solid table because the machine going at speed will be sort of shaking if you like so make sure and sometimes put it if you've made that lovely sewing mat you can put it on your mat and that will just deaden the noise and the bounce a little bit as well. Okay, so I'm going to carry on around the rest of the flower. Actually, that's interesting because you see, oops, you can't see because my hand was across the picture. Um, what happened then, it jumped over the stitch, didn't it? And that's what happens if you move too quickly. You get a really long stitch rather than the nice small stitch that you need for this sort of operation. is trim up these ends just to get them out of the way because you do get lots of ends on free motion and what will happen is they'll get caught underneath but you can see the difference in the the picture and the sketchiness which is really quite nice I've got another flower to go in here but I'm doing the two underneath and then I'll press that one on top and then I can stitch that one out as well and then this is going to go in a frame you can also write with free motion as well. Um, so again, it's like following writing and writing is quite a good way of practicing because writing is something we kind of do without thinking about it. So sometimes by just trying to write your name and things like that is a very good way of practicing. Um, as I say, there is no, I can't give you a sort of a 
most of the time I can tell you, right, do this setting, do this, do this, do this, and everything will be perfect. Do expect to have quite a lot of faffing around when you start. It will be things like threads breaking, because when you think about it, you're putting quite a lot of pressure. And if you're moving that a lot faster than the, the needle and the thread are going, then you're kind of pushing and pulling. So try and keep this as smooth as possible. If you move too quickly, the needle and the thread can't catch up. Or if the needle is already in the fabric when you're moving, you might get a bent needle. So don't expect not to have those sort of issues because th this is one of those things where you do often get I've I've had it this morning actually where I've just had a right change the needle thread keeps breaking had to change the thread I don't tend to use expensive thread for this sort of thing um, because you use so much of it um, but what that means is that very often I'm coming up against quite a lot of broken threads and things like that but with this it's more about the colour palette because if you think of it as actually sort of uh, drawing and painting the colours of the thread are, are what are going to change it all up so like I said I'm doing each of those petals separately so that it gives me time to think and 